you have found yourself on another episode of Locked On Bulls. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the improvement the other teams have made in the Eastern Conference, where the Bulls do sit. Do we see them as a playing team? We'll get into all that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat, the designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Centrals. Uh, nonetheless, we got some Bulls news to talk about today. And Pat, a lot of Bulls speculation in, in round Bulls Nation amongst fans is like, where do the Bulls sit now in the Eastern Conference with the improvement other teams made? I think the Donovan Mitchell trade going to the Cleveland Cavaliers has kind of reinvigorated that conversation that started kind of right after free agency when the Bulls didn't do a lot of the the, the number of moves that some fans would have, would have liked to see them make. And so we're going to start here. First, with improvement in the Eastern Conference that's made, what team do you think that, that made significant changes – made the best changes in the Eastern Conference, Pat? What team that made significant changes made the best changes? That's I, – I have to lean Atlanta. Okay. Even though I'm not a big fan of the smaller backcourt pairing, I mm. think that the smaller backcourt pairing – with a guy like DeJounte Murray, who's more willing to play defense than a guy like Donovan Mitchell is, is going to work out a little bit better because you've got somebody that is a really good defender and is defensive-minded and can guard one through three because of that AK lovable wingspan that he has over there. Um, By the way, did you know Donovan Mitchell's wingspan is 6'10"? Yeah. That's crazy. Why won't he play defense? Anyway, uh, but I just... (laughs) I just I, I saw that yesterday. I was like looking up sizes to debate with somebody uh earlier in the day yesterday and I'm like he's got a 610 wingspan like just put your arms up. But um I think I think that that you know on the defensive mindset and the fact that both uh him and Trey Young can score um adds more to Atlanta's game and more to Atlanta's uh opportunities to create uh, offensive turn or defensive turnovers and stuff like that. That'll put you in more of a position, especially with a shooter like Trey. So if I had to pick anybody, I'd say that is probably the team that I think had the best out of like the major turnovers. The other ones are all small, right? Like is Malcolm Brogdon really do something for you for a championship level. Boston I think he team? does. And that's what actually what I was going to go to, like almost for every reason you named in with, with DeJounte to, uh, to Atlanta, I, I think you got to say the same thing about Malcolm Brock. Brockton brings in exactly what that Atlanta team needed. I mean, sorry, what uh, what that that Boston team needed. When you look at like, even though Smart has become a way better shooter than what he was early in his career, you you bring in Malcolm Brockton, a player who is yeah, he's a high volume but highly efficient scorer as well. You look at his last two seasons, twenty one points per game and nineteen points per game. He brings in a lot of what Boston needs. Now, would I be saying if you flip flop the moves? I don't think Brogdon brings as much to like if it, if he did end up going to Atlanta as yeah. as Dejounte does. So I, I do like I, I I like for them for the teams that they went to, but I think Brogdon and that impact that he's going to have adding a a 29 year old point guard to a already uh, team that did need some more veteranship that does have some solid veterans there as well. I like the addition of Brogdon to 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 the Celtics a lot, brother. I think my biggest question with Brogdon is right, like how, how far can you trust them, right? Because that this will be like I'm assuming the, the Celtics make the playoffs. This will be his first playoff run, right? Yeah, that's true. That's so true. like you're you're talking about a guy where yeah, there's some guys that didn't perform as well in the playoffs last year, but they now have that playoffs experience, right? Like there were moments where Derek White didn't show up like you wanted him to, but there were also moments that were huge for Derek White in the playoffs. And so like I think there's guys like that that you go back and look at and you say, "Okay, I can rely on them moving forward." While I love the idea of having Malcolm Brogdon there, Malcolm Brogdon ain't been in these big games. And there's no, like, it's not, it's, they definitely got better with him, but like, do you put him right? Like, cause I feel like, are you saying like he's swapping out for Marcus Smart? Oh, yeah. Uh, so 
while I, I don't think that the that the, the that it's going to be as difficult to like put Smart on the bench and Michael Rubble, I do understand your point there. I understand your concern. I guess I just look at the fit. I look at the efficiency that uh, Malcolm Brogdon has had in, in scoring his 19 points and the way that he gets those points. And I think that's going to be big for a team that we saw in Boston that at times just had – they just needed somebody else to make cons shots consistently. I think Malcolm Brogdon is going to be able to do that for them. And even though, to your point, that he hasn't played in a lot of big playoff games, things like that, that's all very valid and, and true points, right? But I look at – I guess I look at, like, what else that team has. It's not like they're going to – the big shots that they're going to necessarily need to rely, rely on him on. They're just yeah. need, going to need him to be consistent and, during the in-between times. And I even like the – it's a smaller backcourt, but I think they're going to play some Brogdon and uh, Smart together as well, and I don't necessarily hate that either. Well, I mean, Michael Brogdon is 6'5", so it's not yeah. it's not as small as some of the backcourts that are in the Eastern Conference yeah. now. And I think I think the, the thing for me with Brogdon is, right, like Smart is the point guard that finally gets you to the finals. He's the point guard that does – like, I, I think they needed to upgrade the point guard position. I, I agree with you there. But, like, to go with the one – with the least experience, I don't know. I, I, it could work because at a minimum, the one thing that we we both said during that playoff run was they need somebody that's going to put Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown in a position where they're both efficient. And Malcolm Brogdon can do that. He's a guy that's a, a high assist guy. He's six six assists a game, yeah. something like that. So like, I, I, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. I just think that's a tough like. Hey, uh, <laughs> we appreciate you for everything you've done. Uh, we're giving him your job. <laughs> like that's a tough one for me. I mean, I think I don't think Smart's reluctant to come off the bench either. I mean, he's going to get his minutes regardless. So I mean, we'll see. We'll see the way it works out. Now we talk about th those two teams were both positive on their moves. What team do you think moves are not going to work out the way that Knicks. some of their fan base? Oh. <laughs> Knicks. Well, that's the thing. Do Knicks fans even think that the moves are going to work yes. out like they do? Yes, they do. Okay, okay. They uh, think oh. that they're going to win 50 games next year. Have, have fun with those 44 games, Pimp. Like, 44. That's all I can say. That's a lot. I mean, 39. they won 37 last year. I got last 39 year. tops for you. <laughs> day. Oh, day. Oh. I got 39 tops for you, bro. I, look, the thing is, right, is that me and you broke down the Brunson signing. Like, we talked about Brunson's. When he's on the court with uh with Luca, when he was off the court with Luca, and he's still yeah. a pretty darn good point guard when he was off, when Luca was not on the court with him. But the the thing is, is that looking at this New York team, looking at like Julius Randle, how how God, how twelve months completely changed the outlook of, of fans on him, right? Um, <laughs> Left. They 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 added Isaiah Hardenstein, right? They did. They, they did, Isaiah and Hardenstein. and they brought back and they brought back uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Robinson. Robinson. There's 37 um, centers on this team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the Knicks, and I'm just like, I just I, I, while I do have them pegged to win more, uh, they only have two true centers, bro. Uh, they have a lot of power forwards. They have a lot of forwards. They got <laughs> Sims, Obi Toppin, Julius Randle, uh, and then Hardenstein and 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 Mitchell Robinson. Uh, but you know it's. I'm looking at this team and I'm just like, hey man, listen, this is gonna be one of those teams where it's gonna it's gonna feel very New York Knickish very early in the season. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Hey, bro, four of those guys you mentioned are above six ten. Like, <laughs> hey, Obi Toppin six ten too. No, nah, Obi Toppin six six eight six nine. Is he? Yeah, I thought Obi Toppin was like six ten. Nah, right, he has he has the he has the AK wingspan. That may be. Yeah, really I, I respect it. Oh, he got a seven yeah. nine wingspan. All right, let's do yeah. it. Um. You know, I, I think really that's the only team that I looked at and I was like, y'all making moves to just make moves. I kind of feel that way about Cleveland well, that's always as well. What the Knicks do. Yeah, I, I kind of feel that way about Cleveland as well because I feel like you could have gotten the same out of a Colin Sexton as you did out of a Donovan Mitchell, but I do know that Donovan Mitchell at a minimum is going to be healthy for them, so that's I guess that good. makes a bigger difference for them as well. But I think that uh, I think that one team me and you probably both overlooked on improvements – I mean, we can we say the Bulls improved a lot just well, by going gonna to get, get to our team because that's we're going to get to our team because I think I set up did, that segue. Yeah, I was trying yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate. It. I appreciate. It. We got we got a couple. We got a couple more minutes in this segment though, brother. Before we move on to the next. <laughs> Do we? Hey, listen. I, you know the video tweaks. So I don't know yeah, what yeah, the time yeah. is. The, the question I'm going to ask for you is, is here though, brother. Um, with New York's roster, 
Yeah. How much of they their improvement depends on quickly? Like, do, do you think quickly is going to be able to make significant improvement that were maybe they it, use them enough? I don't think they use the them question. well enough. That's, that you know what I mean? Like, question. it all comes down to how they're going to use these guys. I, I don't feel like – I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Julius Randle's a bad basketball player. I just He's don't not. think they use them well. Okay. I think that's well, the, all he the, do is go the Knicks' the whole issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But, all right, that's so that's what we feel about – the other teams that have made moves in the Eastern Conference. Next up, we're going to be talking about our team and are their moves kind of more valuable than some fans are giving them credit for. But first, got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. You ready for it? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough. Covered in chocolate, that's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they've, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Built.com to snag a box for, your fam- for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and hoard them just for yourself. Like all Built Bars, the new cookie dough chunk puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. It's so good. You're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need a to grab a quick bite. Built is the perfect protein bar, and they taste better than a candy bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a Built Bar. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKEDON15, and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKEDON15 to get 15% off your order at Built.com. All right, Pat. Now it's time to talk about our team, the Chicago Bulls. There's been a lot made of the Bulls' lack of movement, the moves that they have made, the moves that they should have made from Bulls Nation. How do we feel now that everything's kind of settled? There may be another move or so to be made. We'll see. There's still some 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 nice possible free agents out there. What do you think about where the Bulls, what the moves the Bulls did make, and where that now has them sitting in the Eastern Conference. The the thing that I think about it right is I can't – I remember what I went into the offseason saying the Bulls needed. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, they've done a pretty good job at addressing it. Are they the names that we want them to be? Maybe not, right? Like, I literally went into last offseason saying – you have to find guys that can knock down shots. You have to find better rebounding. Those were the two issues that continually popped up versus the Milwaukee Bucks. They went out and they found one of the best rebounders in the NBA, legitimately, mm-hmm. and signed him to a deal that basically doesn't even make sense. And you found a really, really good score. By the way, he's been putting up numbers every game overseas in Slovenia. <laughs> or playing for Slovenia, not in Slovenia. Yeah. Like, major numbers. Like, 25 points in, like, 18 minutes of play. So, I think that they addressed what they needed to address. And at the end of the day, just like every other big market team, every big winning team, you have to rely on your guys to be the guys they're supposed to be. Zach Levine has to be, he, he's got to take another step. Patrick Williams, you got to take a step. We got to figure out where you're going to go. DeMar DeRozan, keep doing what you're doing. Booch, you got to get it back together, right? Like you brought these guys in here. You've hitched your wagon to these guys. And I, I love the guys that like, I, I think it was um, Sylvie from Waddle and Sylvie. He tweeted out that on the day of Donovan Mitchell trade that, All these other teams in the East got better. But they didn't, and the Bulls didn't make any moves. Bucks didn't make any moves. Miami didn't make any moves. They'll probably still be at the top. Uh, Who who else really didn't make any major moves to their team? Like, there's a, Philly didn't really make any major moves, right? Like, there's a bunch of teams that are going with the, hey, we want these guys to play together. And the Bulls are going down that same path because that's what the top teams in the East do. If you want to say adding Malcolm Brogdon is major, we can go with that. But, I mean, the core that that team is is 100% together. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, too, that, like, 
you, you run into the, I call it the 2K mindset, right? And I know it's more than just 2K, but you have the fans, quote unquote, that all yeah. they really do is just, they look at the trade machine more than they look at actual basketball, right? Yeah. They want what, what we did last, last offseason to be every season. You remember when we got, we got the, the Lonzo, the DeMar, like the AC, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like all that crap happened all like within like a week of each other. Yeah. They want that. And I like it's not going to be that every uh, teams that do that are good teams don't do that amount of moves every offseason. Yep. They make they do make incremental moves and sometimes they make, you know, larger incremental moves, but they're still incremental moves. Nonetheless, like you said, Malcolm Brogdon, while he brings a lot of what Boston did, that was an incremental move. It's not like it, it that's not franchise changing. Yeah, the Bulls brought in while and people. Again, people say rim protection, and they really just mean shot blocking. Bulls brought in somebody who can protect the rim because he's so big, and hopefully he stops people from penetrating. <laughs> On top of that, he's going to get the Bulls so many more extra possessions by the way that he rebounds. Yeah. So, like, it was it was it the flashy move? Was it the Isaiah Hartenstein who I really wanted the Bulls to go after? Was it the Mitchell Robinson? Was it the the? No, it wasn't that level of money. And even like Isaiah Hartenstein, if you add if the and that's the thing, right? Bulls fans are looking at the the amount of changes that the Bulls made. Yeah, they're judging that by how much money they spent. Yep. If the Bulls did had use their full mid level exception on Isaiah Hardenstein, I'm not ranking the t the team that much more than what they did with the Andre Drummond sign. Yes, is Isaiah Hardenstein a better offensive player by by the metrics? Yes, but how much of that is he really was he really going to be able to do in the 18 to 20 minutes and that's and that's the real that's the real question right like yeah. i'll bet you isaiah hartenstein's numbers look a lot closer to andre drummond's numbers just like he's going to be out there as the backup center basically yeah yeah because mitchell robinson got the bag so he's just starter so, like, I, I, I feel like Bulls fans, we have to look at the moves that AK made and say, yeah, they're not huge money moves. They're not crazy moves. But that's because you made huge money moves last season. You spent already. You spent a ton of money to go get DeMar DeRozan, who looks to be really good with you. Oh, by the way, I don't know if Muzz realized this, but you spent a heck of a lot of money to keep Zach Levine in the building. Like, I feel like that's a move that gets overlooked a lot this offseason. The Bulls spent money this offseason. They spent $215 million to keep Zach Levine around. Like, that's not that's not something to, to, to scoff at because every other team that uh, 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 was out here trying to get their team back on track was looking to add Zach Levine to that team. And I also think, like, people talk about the amount of moves. The Atlanta Hawks had to make more moves than the Chicago Bulls because the Chicago Bulls are a better team than the Atlanta Hawks. Facts. Period. That's just Facts. period. So, like, like I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I hate the doubt sometimes around our team. I understand it, especially sometimes with the, with the way that the Bulls played in the latter half of the season. I understand it. Uh, but, you know, it kind of – it just sucks with how people are ranking our team, bro. Like – I mean, listen, DJJ, especially if you get him on the run right, is is an asset to have. I think uh, that's going to be very dependent on what we see from Io DeSumo. But I think you could see a a. Of course, we know AK wants to go with that length lineup, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is this is the time now, knowing what Lonzo's situation is, finally knowing where he's at, where you might see Dalen Terry sneak his way into a lineup and maybe get a little bit of run where he's getting that uh he's going to be that guy setting up that high flying offense. Cause his vision is probably one of the more underrated things that we didn't see as much literally after AK went into summer league and was like, Hey, uh, we want to see him scoring first. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, right after that, it was like, Oh, okay, well uh, let me just put this ball in the bucket. So I think, I think that that'll give Dalen Terry a little bit more opportunity to get some run, um, hopefully see him kind of become that facilitator that we think he can be also being able to score the ball. I think he could be your Lonzo replacement. I, it's tough to say, right? Cause I don't think they're moving on from Lonzo, but what I'm saying is that guy where we know Io DeSumo can be more of a combo guard, that guy that can come in off your bench and be a legitimate. Yeah. I can shoot the ball. I can score the ball. I can defend and I can facilitate this mug like that. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, Dalen Terry, I think, is, I, I, yeah, I, I think he's going to be playing more on the wing. Uh, yeah. But this does open up with Lonzo possibly not being ready to go by the start of the season. It definitely opens up some more minutes for Dalen Terry, as we talked about. And I think that that 
the the acquisition of Dalen Terry may not pay its dividends off in this first season like IOs did. We'll see. It yeah. could, but I think I think long term we're definitely gonna look at Dalen Terry and be like the Bulls got a heck of a piece at at number I, eight. You know what's crazy? I feel like the thing that's gonna get him in, of course, like I think in the beginning it's gonna be the minutes, but it's just gonna be the energy. Yeah, like there's there's no is there anybody else on this team that we feel like no matter what they're gonna try and make a play they're gonna try and get the ball they're gonna try and knock the ball out of something like no matter what's happening like they're always gonna be active I feel like Caruso yeah Caruso like outside of that extent. that's kind of it yeah but I, I see what you mean there we'll see we'll see I mean then Terry's his size, his length, his uh, the wingspan, the athleticism. It it could very well get him some significant minutes while Lonzo Ball is out early on yeah. the season. So we'll see that. So as we move into the last topic for today, Pat, there's going to be a team of these of one of these teams, the eleven that we talked about, that do, that either do not make the playoffs or that fall lower than maybe what we may think at the beginning of the season. A which one of these teams out of the Heat, Celtics, uh, you know what, I'm not even going to list them because they're not going to do it unless there's some significant injury. So it's out of the Toronto Raptors, Chicago Bulls, Atlanta Hawks, Cleveland Cavaliers, Charlotte Hornets, New York Knicks. Who do you think is going to have the most di- – well, I know you, the Knicks, you, you, it's not even going to be a play-in, <laughs> but who do you think is going to disappoint the most out of those teams? Um, Who's going to disappoint the most out of those teams? I think Toronto stay. I think Toronto gets better, right? Because I mean, Scotty Barnes is improving. Um, I, as, as crazy as it is to say, right? Like, I think Atlanta has the most to prove, right? Like, all the moves sound great, Cleveland, all of that, right? Like, they all sound great, but I think out of all of them, right, Atlanta has the most to prove because Atlanta didn't look like they played great together last season, and then they had a new piece into it. Okay. So, like, I think that they're going to have the – while I think that they have the best opportunity with a defensive player in there to have that success, I think they're going to have the biggest uphill battle when it comes to not just getting DeJounte Murray and Trey Young to mesh, but they had a bunch of pieces kind of in and out of that lineup all season last season that were, you know, Clint Capella, uh, uh, um, John Collins the third. We didn't even know if John Collins was going to be there. We still and then all the, he could wake up we tomorrow. Still don't know. Like, hey, I want to out of here. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> like, I want out. No, <laughs> Kevin Durant can't leave. Neither can you. Dang it. <laughs> um, so, like, I, I think I think that that's the part that that intrigues me. I think they're going to have the toughest time gelling, or it's going to take the most amount of time for them to gel. Um, because I don't think Cleveland really like. To me, Cleveland brought in the same player that they somewhat had. In in Colin Sexton, I mean, a better version of him for sure, but but a similar player, and I think that they already know what their game plan is. At the end of it, hey, listen, we got to make sure that Evan Mobley's getting the ball and that Jared Allen's blocking shots. Yeah. So, I, mean, I, I don't see the Bulls falling out of playoff contention. Oh, that yeah, that goes without saying. I don't. I, don't I, see I, I just don't like. I don't see a chance where the Bulls are outside of, the, or or even in the play. And I don't see us as an eight seed, right? Like, there's been there's major turnover on some of these teams, and and all of a sudden we're an eight seed. <laughs> yeah, 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 and we still don't even know what's going on with Brooklyn. Is Ben Simmons going to be able to play? Like, I know that they they say that he is, but we'll see. Like. Yeah. And we haven't even gotten to see what that unit actually looks like together, right? Yeah. So with, with Ben Simmons being on that team, while they do have a lot of talent, I still like the haul that they overall got back from James Harden. You got to see it actually play together on the court. Does Kyrie go and finally move to the desert and become Obi-Wan Kenobi? We don't know any of these. Yeah, there are a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions around this. So I think that the people that are just saying, oh, the Bulls are just going to be a playing team just off the rip, I think, that, I think that that's reactionary. And I think that we need to kind of slow down. Realize that what this team does have and realize that for teams, continuity usually does breed better results. Now, teams get to a point to where they stagnate and they have to make a change. But yeah. this team hasn't been together long enough for us to be, get to that point. So, yeah, we want to be like, I, I, I think people forget, right? Like last season was supposed to be this season. Yeah. I hope for last season up. was make the playoffs, get 40, 40 wins. That was that was our only hope for last season. That that's what we came into the season with. Oh, you make the playoffs, get forty wins. Like I didn't see. I was one of those people that I was like, I I don't see us winning fifty games. Yeah, 
And now we're talking about the Bulls possibly, in my opinion, right, coming into this season, winning more than 50 games. Yeah. Because I think there will be an improvement. I think there will be a, 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 a understanding of who's standing next to you a little bit more. I think there will be better health in this season. I think that's really what it comes down to, right? Like, I, here's here's my question to Bulls Nation and to you, right? And you, you've kind of alluded to this already, but, like, is our fear that our talent isn't good enough or is our fear that our talent won't be healthy enough to win? See, that's the thing. I think it at least for me, it's just health. I don't worry about the talent on this team. This team has talent. Contrary to what some people have you believe, health is the biggest concern, right? And, yeah, there was a lot of freak things that happened last season. Alex Caruso should not have been out, right? Yeah. Derrick Jones Jr., his thumb, uh, he got what? He got caught on a dunk, right? How did Derrick Jones Jr.? I, I can't remember. No, I know something with his thumb. He, no, that, no, that was Io. Io being a rookie, throwing him a oop after he came back oh, from a okay. broken thumb. Okay. Relax, Io. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he dunked it and then looked at him like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, then, I forget uh, how he broke his thumb. I, I think he just landed awkwardly. Yeah, so that and then, you know, the Javante Green shoulder injury for a while, which I think that we Zach, forgot as well. Zach's knee. Zach's knee. Like, which when, shouldn't be when an he, issue. Uh, or was and it the back? Thing is too, when was it versus Golden State? Was it the back or the knee? It was, no, that was the knee versus Golden State. He shot a three, came down weird, and literally pulled himself out of the game. So, yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I do think that let, let's 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 take the wait and see approach. But I don't. I'm not worried about the talent on this team. I think this team has more than enough talent. I, they just need to stay healthy, and we'll see where we, where the chips fall next season. Yeah, I I agree with you, bro. I I, I I'm I'm right there with you on that. Ah oh, man. So any any one of these teams scare you the most? Well, it's not like we're in championship conditions, but the Charlotte Hornets, bro. One team that we have not talked very much about is the Charlotte Hornets. You know, I like the talent on that team. We know the situation with Bridges. They did lose talent and things like that. Yep. Where do you think they're going to come in next season? Do you think that they're the team that, that may miss out? Do you think the Knicks can can leapfrog the Charlotte Hornets? What are you thinking with everything that's going on with that team? You know what's crazy? Yeah. I, I think okay. that's I think that's how, how tough of a jump it's going to – or a fall it's going to be for Charlotte. Because I don't think you addressed anything, right? Like – I watched that game last year, and yeah, they went out and they got a, the, the the young big man, um, Mark Williams. Mark Williams, and I liked that move. I liked the big man point guard combination. Um, I feel like Lamelo will be able to get him involved a lot, mm -hmm. but you needed shooters. Lamelo was looking for guys to pass the ball to all during that that playing game, and he was kicking it out and kicking it out and kicking it out, and guys kept missing. Yeah. So either you're going to make the decision of, hey, LaMelo, we want you to be a 25-point-per-game guy, or you got to put shooters around him. And I don't know if LaMelo is that guy that's going to be the, I go out every night and put up 25-plus. If he makes that kind of jump, then yeah. But, like, outside of that, I just I, I don't feel good about Charlotte at all. Mm. I feel like they're a team that – of course, like you can't do much about the Miles Bridges situation. That is what it is, right? That that's going to come down to just it, it's it's a bad situation, and your team can't do anything about that. You couldn't have predicted that happening. Yeah. But outside of that, what did they do to get better? Like I don't yeah. feel like there was anything done in there. In their I mean, it kind of they they were still the kind of weird hand with the Bridges thing that was outside of their control. I mean, they did like you said they drafted the young big man, which they did need on that team. Uh, they are really betting on Lamelo and other young players taking the leap. That's what they're betting on, and we'll see. Lamelo yeah. in the third season, does he take the third season leap? It could very well be possible. I mean, already averaged twenty points per game last season, so we could see Lamelo go into that place where he does maybe not twenty five, but maybe twenty three, twenty four game. Other players making extent, uh, minor jumps too. Yeah. We could see, but yeah, they could very well be the team that falls out. I think the question is: Is that what you want to ask Lamelo to do, right? Yeah. Or would you rather have Lamelo being the great facilitator that he can be and making other guys better while still putting up twenty points a game? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I okay. think that's really like you have to decide where you want your team to go. Like, yeah. I, I think Lamelo has the ability to put up twenty five a game, but like. Is that where is what's going to lead your team to the most success? Maybe this season, sure. we'll see. For sure, for sure. 
All right, bro. That's it, man. Go ahead and unless there's anything else, let's go ahead and wrap it up, bro. Send there this one is on. nothing left. Uh, <laughs> follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. Follow us both on everything at Locked On Bulls. Appreciate you guys for showing love, man. You can follow me at CEO Hayes, the CEO H A I Z E. And thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, go and check on the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022. It's an eight episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of Locked On Podcast Network. Plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one ultimate NFL preview. Search Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Audacity app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This is Locked On Bulls. We out. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all.